Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video, I would like to briefly talk about how we can use the DB context in background services or in more general terms, how can we use code services inside of Singleton services? And I ask this question virtually in any interview and I am always amazed on how many people actually give the answer wrong. To showcase this, I have here created this very simple application where we have this DB context and I use the in-memory database. And I also have here a hosted service, which is a background service, which is this cleanup service. Here what we do, we inject the AppDB context and then we have to implement this execute async method as part of inheriting this background service space class. And here, while the cancellation is not required, we want to perform some database cleanup. So everything looks nice and clean, but if we start to run the application, we get this very hated exception. And if we take a look at this exception and what exactly it says, it says error while validating the service descriptor. And it essentially says that for the lifetime for the iHosted service, which is a singleton and cannot consume scoped service of the type AppDB context. So virtually we cannot consume a scoped service into a singleton service. So how do we resolve that? As I mentioned, I get a lot of different approaches. Some people say that we can tweak with the DB context registration and register it as transient. However, if we run the application now, the problem will still be there because also the transient service cannot be resolved in a singleton service. So you see, it's exactly the same exception. So we didn't resolve anything. Another approach would be to use here singleton, which is actually the worst possible approach. And this time it will surely work, but the DB context will be singleton, which is definitely a no-go. Another approach would be to come here to the cleanup service. And before we actually instantiate the DB context, we won't inject it, but we can create manually an instance of the DB context using this using construct so that we make sure that it will be disposed when it's not used anymore. From all these approaches that we had so far, this is probably the most convenient one and the best one to use. Still, it does not leverage the dependency injection functionality and we can definitely do better than that. The problem here is from my point of view that there is a total misunderstanding on what a scoped service mean. We tend to think about this idea of scoped services as being something like very abstract that is scoped to a certain request. But if we think technically, what does this technically mean is that whenever a request comes in, HP.NET Core creates a scope instance. Yes, a scope is nothing else than an object that gets created when a request comes in and then services are resolved into that specific instance. So the idea behind it is that we can create our own scope inside our background service and use that scope to require or to create a DB context instance and then simply use it. To do this, we need to tweak around a little bit the class that we have so far. So first of all, we will not inject the DB context anymore, but we will inject an iService provider. So after the field, we also specify the iService provider as a constructor parameter and we assign it to the field. So first of all, as I mentioned, we need to create our own scope instance. And we'll also place this in this using construct. So we'll have our scope service provider. And on the service provider, we have this create scope method that is essentially creates a scope. And once we have the scope, we can then just simply create a new context instance by, by requiring the service from the scope. And to do this, we have on the scope the service provider and that then gets required service. And we specify what service do we want. And in our case, we want the AppDB context. Now, obviously, we just need to tweak around here a little bit to delete the underscore from the CTX because we are not using a field anymore. It's just a regular variable. And now everything should be working. So if we run the application, we see that everything works properly. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like it so that others might discover it easier. And if you have any question, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. Obviously, if you're for the first time here, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there's new content on this channel. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.